Welcome to Turning the Page. I'm host Donnie Morris of Confetti Antiques and Books. Today we find ourselves actually in my backyard, and we have with us Steve Hedgie, who has written a new book, uh, Wasatch Wildflowers, a field guide. Excellent book. It's fun, it's intuitive, and it's exciting. Steve, welcome to our program today. Also, we have with us my wife, Kara, who is an avid gardener and uh, wildlife person, so she's joining us here today because she enjoys this. We're outside today and it's actually kind of warm. That's good. I'm going to roll my sleeves up if you don't mind. But uh, Steve, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about your book. Tell us a little bit about who you are and where the idea for the book came from. Well, I moved to Utah about four years ago. Uh, my wife had relatives here and I'd been here before. But when we moved here, I decided to do some hiking. And I was out there mostly alone kind of bored being alone and I started looking around and looking at things and I thought I saw these flowers that I wasn't able to recognize so I started taking pictures of them and um, taking them home and trying to identify what the flowers were however uh, I found I had several frustrations doing that one of them was I wasn't that great a picture taker or photographer so I had to learn some things in that regard I actually bought, I had a little point and shoot that I started with and uh, we have a picture that I think they'll show of a columbine that was taken with that point and shoot camera. And you can take good pictures with a point and shoot camera. What you need is an understanding of composition and light. That's about 80% of picture taking. Hmm. So I went through the process of learning that. Then I had the other frustration of trying to identify these flowers. There is no book that's equivalent to mine out there. So I started going through the process of learning how to identify the flowers. And once I got to the point where I could uh, make some progress in that regard, I started putting them on a CD so that I could share them with my other hiking friends. One of my hiking friends looked at it and said, hey, you've got the basis for a book here. So Steve, tell us how you came from an idea to put, putting together a book. Well, I, I never thought I would write a book. I, I just thought I would uh, create this CD and eventually put stuff on the web page, on a web page, a website. But I have a, one of my hiking friends is an author of uh, books himself. In fact, he wrote a book for this area called 60 Hikes Within 60 Miles. His name's Greg Witt. Excellent, excellent hiking book for this area. He looked at the material and thought that, you know, it should be a book. And in fact, he started contacting publishers. <laughs> All of his publishers weren't making new acquisitions at that point, but then he got contacted by Cedar Fort, the publisher of the book, and they, they asked, do you want to do a hiking book? And he said, well, the market's a little oversaturated with hiking books, but I know a guy who could, who could uh, write a good wildflower book for you. And they asked nice. me for some sample pages and some pictures, and they got excited about it. And, so we ended up moving forward. Tell me a little bit about the layout of the book. Here on the side there's some color tabs. Exactly what is that for? Well sure. Uh, one of the things we did was we took all the wildflower books that I owned, which was seven or eight of them, and we sat down over at Cedar Fort and looked through them and picked out the elements that we thought were the best. Okay. And we started with that as a starting point and then Angela Olson, the book designer, took it even further. But one of, the com one of the things that's not uncommon with wildflower books is to, to separate it by color. That's helpful for the layman who, who, is, who is attracted first to the flower and the color of the flower. Okay, so I see a yellow flower, I go to the yes. yellow section. Right. Some of the colors, um, white and yellow and purple, are the most populous colors of flowers that you'll find out there. So they're divided even further in the sense that on these little tabs, you'll see a little daisy shape. Oh. And that means at the beginning of the white section, all the daisy shaped flowers come first. And then at some point, the little daisy disappears and you have the non-daisy shaped flowers. Uh -huh. oh. So that helps you get closer right, right off the bat. Yes. Now, I actually found one in here that last um, summer we hiked Stewart Falls up Provo Canyon. Yes. And there was this beautiful little red flower that we loved and took pictures of. And I said, hey, I'm going to look and see if it's in here. It's in here. Was it the Scarlet Gillia or the Eden's um, Penstemon? 
I think it was the second one. <laughs> I think I marked it. There's the Eaton's Penstemon. Nope, not that one. Let me look and see if I can find it. Oh no, it is. It is the Scarlet Jillian. Scarlet Jillian. Yes. Lovely flower. Very it's got cute. little freckles in the front yes. of it and so forth. Some other elements that I'd like to point out about the book are at the very top, it's got the a common name of the plant. Common names are difficult because you can walk, um, you can you can go one county over and someone will call the plant something different. Sure. But but nonetheless, um, this is this is a relatively common name for the plant. Underneath it are the scientific names for the plant, the genus and species combination that really defines this plant as opposed to any other kind of plant. Well, let's go to the sago lily page, can we? I think we that would can. be one that would be. Uh, a lot of people here in Utah are familiar with that. It's our state flower. Mm -hmm. let's, let's talk specifically about it. Of course, that would be in the white section. I have that one marked because I have a question about it. Okay. <laughs> the the sego lily or sago lily is the Utah state flower. Um, when you see them out there, you, you shouldn't pick them. I think it's against the law. Uh, the uh, pioneers uh, ate them when they first came and were hungry, and the Indians showed them how to do it. But it's not something we should do anymore. Now, if it's on your private property, that's okay to do. Yeah. But if it's on state land or not your land, Out in the you, wild, you better yeah. not do that. Now, for those of you who want to see this lovely flower, but you should be able to find it in the foothills along the mountains just to the south here or all along the front of in the north side and south side of the lake mountains. Okay. Uh, right now it's just it's showing as just two little grass-like leaves and uh, it is a lily so it's got that typical sword long okay. skinny leaf shape of a lily. Right here let's let's bring that in is right here you'll notice this weird looking word right there on the in the middle of the page that uh, nobody can pronounce and that's because it's not a word. It's actually the months of the year. And yeah. you've highlighted in there the months of the year that you can expect to see this flower blooming. I think that's a great idea. All throughout the book, every flower, it says what months you can see this flower blooming. It's possible that you can see, depending on the year, the flower either before or after that period. But these are the typical periods when you'd find it. That's a great idea. What else do we find on the page? Well, there's a, a brief description kind of a poetic description of the plant. In this case, for sago lily, it says, uh, um, look for it in the foothills, hiding in the grasses around the beginning of June. The white flower is very beautiful and intricate on the inside. And that, that's truly the case with these flowers. If you look at them very closely, you'll see that there are bands of color in the center and that there's what we call bearded um, bearded petals, which are long, dense, hairy patches in there. Um, and the plants are white on the outside. They're beautiful when the light shines through them from, from the backside. Then also on the book here, we've got these little sections um, denoted by different symbols. So a picture of a flower, that, that means this is the description of the flower. Pic a picture of the leaves, and that means this is a description of the leaves. A little mountain for the habitat. A picture of, the, of North America for the range, because I'll say which states it's in and whether it's in, you know. So for the sago lily, it's not just found in Utah. Right, it's found in Arizona, Colorado, Idaho, Montana, and North Dakota, Nevada, Nebraska, and so on. Huh. Well, Steve, I have a question. I wanted to go out and hunt for sago lily bulbs to try to eat them like the pioneers did, but since I can't do that, talk to me about what other plants there are that are edible plants that we can go find. All right. Well, I've got a variety of suggestions for you. Um, well, let's, uh, let's go to commercial break. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about edible plants. I'm host Donnie Morris. We've got Steve Hedgie here with us and my wife, Kara Morris, so we can talk about uh, Wasatch wildflowers. We'll be right back.